Richard Fox is here today from Butterfly Conservation. He's head of recording at Butterfly Conservation and his work is related to changes in butterfly populations across the UK. So he's linking the physics-based research that we do at the Met Office with the biological records that they take at butterfly conservation. He's also helping to advise us on the best policy to manage the site here. So, so what we do at the moment is kind of an experiment. We, we're mowing each of the two areas in alternate years, right. so biennial mowing, yeah. in the hope that that will give overwintering species the chance to survive yeah. without, without massacring them at the end of the season. Absolutely. What, what do you think is best? Well, I think that's absolutely right. Well, the, the last thing you want to do for like a nice wildflower meadow like this is cut the whole thing mm. or, or, you know, at any one time. The butterfly conservation, our aim, our mission is to conserve butterflies and moths and, and the environments where they live for future generations of humans to enjoy. And because everything about butterflies is dependent on the weather, it's really important for us to understand how climate change and changing weather is going to impact on our butterflies. I use the Met Office app a lot on my phone. Obviously, you only see butterflies on nice sunny days. So I check the app, work out whether the temperature is going to stay up, whether there's going to be cloud cover overnight, what the wind's going to do. So the data from the Met Office is absolutely crucial in helping to inform how things will change, how butterflies will change and how the management for them should change in the future. Britain's generally quite a cool, damp part of Europe for many of our butterflies. So quite a lot of them have been able to spread northwards. So species like the comma, the speckle wood, they're spreading into new parts of northern England and even into parts of Scotland as well. So there are some clear winners, but unfortunately many of our butterflies have not been able to take that opportunity that climate change has afforded. And that seems to be because the habitats that they require simply are too few and far between. Those habitats have been destroyed by human management of the landscape over many centuries. When we first arrived on site um, just over 10 years ago, the site was being managed in a very different manner. Um, there were pesticides being used. So we've taken um, a very proactive um, attitude to all of this, um, very clear management plan for the site, changing the way that the gardening is done on site. And this has led to us receiving the biodiversity benchmark from the Wildlife Trust. There have been one or two surprises. We've had uh, one sighting of common lizard so far, and another interesting arrival is the brown Argus butterfly, which wasn't seen in the first few years um, and is now a regular visitor in the summer. There are lots of things that people can do to help butterflies. You can have good nectar plants that will encourage butterflies to come in and feed. The best thing you can do, though, is to actually try and get butterflies breeding in your garden. Our caterpillars tend to be much fussier than the adult butterflies. So for example, you can plant the native shrub buckthorn as they have here at the Met Office. Easiest of all, you can just let some of your grass grow long. As you know, we do a, a butterfly transect walk. Um, we started off last year every, every two weeks, but this year right. we've now gone to every week. Brilliant. This year we've found we've, we've got more marbled whites. Right. And we think it's due, we don't know for sure, we think it's due to the fact that we're leaving one area right. behind us uncut. Whether you fill your flower beds with non-native, um, non-nectar rich plants, or you fill them with native flowers which bear nectar for insects visiting butterflies, for example, the cost is very similar. And in terms of mowing the site, if you leave areas for most of the year unmown, then obviously the area that you mow is less. And so overall, the cost is pretty neutral.